What's going on, smart people? I said in the last article review that I wanted people to share fun little articles that they wanted me to review next time. And someone did. So someone sent me a link to the website that I'm currently on right now, and it looks like it has something to do with healing crystals. So we're going to go through this. We're going to pick it apart a little bit. I don't call these debunk videos because really it's just more or less me reading it and just giving my thoughts on it. I'm not, I can't be bothered to put too much effort into being like, well, you see, based off of my math, this is, no, that just sounds, I would get bored with that very fast. But anyways, this has to do with healing crystals, I think. So let's, let's just start, let's just jump right in. It's called a uh, hib hibiscus, hibiscus moon. Okay. The question is, it looks like, will my crystals still be powerful if they if they faded in the sunlight? And there's 40 comments. Uh, I love this recent question I recently I received recently about crystals fading in the sunlight. It covered many angles. I love it. It's a loaded question and right up my geo geek alley. Okay, so um, does this person have like a in a little bit, I'll probably go to this about section just to check the person's uh, credibility or their background more than anything. I'd normally do that first, but because I'm making a video on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this regardless, so it doesn't. We can just wait till the end to do that. It says, uh, "You mentioned not to put certain crystals that are very strongly pigmented in the sun because they fade. Why does the pigment fade in the sun, and how does that affect the crystal if it does fade?" If the pigment related, is the pigment related to the quantity of the min mineral inside the crystal? And if so, would the difference in pigment in a crystal affect how well it performs? I.e., if I get a piece of amethyst, and that is, uh, that is only lightly pigmented, does that mean a heavier pigmented amethyst would outperform the lighter one? I.e., is it of better quality? Uh, so first, I, I haven't looked into this website at all. I don't know what they mean by perform. I don't know what the goal of these crystals is. So I'm assuming they're, they're talking about like healing factor, something like that. I'm going to suspend my disbelief until the very end, or I'm going to try to, anyways. Um, but I guess for someone, this is like a cue, maybe a fact, like a frequently asked question thing. Uh, and the person is, it sounds like an honest question, and it sounds like almost a good question but someone who already buys into this stuff. So they're just saying, you know, if can sunlight affect how nicely colored a crystal is? I think that's a fair question. Okay, but let's move on. I'm assuming they're going to answer. Yes. Answer. Well, why some colors fade really has to do with photon physics or particle physics. Oh yeah, jelly bean, I said physics and you're going to like it. First, let's simply explain what a photon is. It's a teeny tiny bundle, aka quantum, of electromagnetic energy. You're close. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. So far, so good. EM energy equals light. One and the same, you with me. Okay. I mean, light has energy, but light isn't necessarily energy. Don't be nitpicky, Andrew. Enjoy it. They're trying. Now, when a photon from any source, the sun, a light bulb, whatevs, hits an atom, two things could happen. I can't wait to find out what these two things are. If the atom's nucleus has a color charge, oh, okay, has color charge, basically a certain color by virtue of an extra particle. Not sure what that means, but the photon will kick the extra sucker out. Gotta interject real quick. Color charge is an actual thing. That's, uh, if you talk about, like, an electromagnetism, the quantity that you're concerned with with that has to do with charge. If you go into different forces, like the strong nuclear force, then that quantity is actually the color charge. If you're talking about the weak nuclear force, then you're talking about flavor. One thing that I hope they don't get into in here, I hope they keep it separate, when you say color charge, that has nothing to do with color. It's completely different thing. I mean, we're talking about size scales smaller than an atom, right, because uh, the strong force has to do with keeping quarks inside the nucleus. 
So if we're talking about quark interactions, then uh, we're talking about size scales much smaller than visible light. So for perspective, the size of an atom is roughly an angstrom, which is on the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters. And uh, then we're talking about visible light, which is on the order of a nanometer, so over an order of magnitude smaller, which means that when you get to size scales that small, it doesn't make sense to ask things like, what color is it? Because color is, in a sense, larger than that or at least the wavelength of the light is larger than the wavelength of those particles, if that makes sense. That might have nothing to do with this, but let's, let's keep going. So they say, you know, the photon will kick the extra sucker out. I don't know what they mean by extra sucker. Hey, get out of there. It's too damn crowded. With the poor extra bugger gone, that makes the atom colorless or neutral. When the extra color charged particle, aka quark, hits your eye. Yep, the, yep, <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, the one that got kicked out, your brain registers that as color, so that is what she's doing. Boy, girl, you. <laughs> okay. Uh, where do I start? When you get to that size scale and you start wanting to describe uh, how quarks interact at that level, one of the things, well, you need quantum chromodynamics, right? It's the theory of the strong force. That's the theory that uh, describes how quarks don't go flying apart from each other. It's, it's what keeps the nucleus bound. And um, one, of, one of the byproducts of it is this thing called confinement, which essentially says that if you have your three quarks inside the nucleus, there's lots more than that. There's, that's just the simplified version. But picture your three quark model. You can't just pick one out and look at it. You can't isolate a quark. That's the process called confinement. And um, essentially what, what it boils down to is the energy it would take to pull that quark away from the other two, you would be able to create more particles in doing that. So you pull that quark away, and then you'd have the string of particles being created and the string of quarks being created to pair with that quark you just isolated. So this person's saying, uh, when that quark hits your eye, that's just... In extremely incorrect. It's, there's no way to wiggle around that and force that to be like, well, if this person mean, if they, what they really mean is that no, that's wrong. That's just wrong. By the way, let me um, let me say now that I'm not by any means an expert on QCD. I have an internship in it, a research internship in it, but that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. So anything I say in this, you know, I'm reviewing an article, but you should also take anything some person says online with a grain of salt and do some research yourself. Again, like I said, this isn't debunking, this is giving my thoughts. So, uh, you know, fact check me. But let's move on. So they say, um, yeah, and they say, so they say, the cork is what hits your eye, and the cork has color, and that's what your brain perceives as color. That's just an, an abuse of, like, the physics jargon. The color isn't actual color. That's just what you call the quantity associated with, like, distinguishing quarks. Or it's really, it's the strong force analog to electric charge. That's better. Uh, Richard Feynman actually was the one that said that that should not be the name. It's very misleading. It has nothing to do with color whatsoever. This person must not know Feynman. Uh, and you, you really can't blame anyone for not knowing that because it is a misleading word. You're saying color. That's already a thing that describes something else. You can't come up with another word, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, after a while of receiving light out there, our atoms are going to start running out of color-charged quarks, right? Okay. And the colorless atoms will... You know what this reminds me of? Is that scene in Dazed and Confused where that, like, pothead is talking about like Benjamin Franklin or George Washington and he has all these wild theories about stuff. It kind of reminds me of that where that guy had like, he knew enough history to almost sound convincing with certain things. Like this person knows just enough buzzwords to make it sound like they know something. Uh, but that's how they get you. And that's why I'm here. Start running out of charged quarks, right? And then that leads to the color fading of the crystal. Number two, if a photon strikes a color neutral atom, it's either going to get bounced off or get absorbed as heat. And you won't see that guy because photons are considered gray or colorless.
It's the photons that give the color. Are you kidding me? It's photons at different wavelengths, different energies that you perceive as different sides of the spectrum of visible or non-visible light. It's the electromagnetic spectrum. It wouldn't be. It is color. Photons are... Got to be careful with that. Photons with certain amounts of energy, certain frequencies, are what we perceive as color. So to say that they're colorless, that's incorrect. I'm triggered. <laughs> Don't be messing with my photons. It seems that UV light specifically is the fading culprit. Both natural UV from the sun or man-made UV. Yeah, the same kind of UV light. Yeah, they're saying uh, light fades things. I mean. You ever have like an old car? Of course it fades things. Or of course it fades color. Uh, will it make my crystal fade? I don't know enough about crystals. And apparently I don't know enough about healing crystals to speak on this behalf. To, I, I would assume it's fair to think that uh, light can make the color fade. I don't really know. So I'm not really going to speak on that behalf. Does it affect the crystal's energy? Let's find out. I don't feel that fading affects the crystal's effectiveness greatly, but the color change does somewhat change its dominantly oscillatory oscill vibrational frequency, as color frequency is part of what makes that vibration up. The fading didn't affect the crystal's basic molecular structure, so if it was amethyst before, but now, uh, now just a light amethyst. It will still do its amethyst thing. I can't get, I just, I like reading these articles for fun just because they're silly, but I can't imagine doing this and then giving my stamp of approval and high-fiving myself and being like, I had a good job today. I answered someone's questions. Again, it has to do with how stable the atoms are, or sometimes it actually has to do with water loss between the molecules. Certain crystals are more prone to fading. In my humble opinion, it doesn't mean... Okay. Healing power. I would most def still use it. Put your goggles on, throw in glitter. <sighs> oh my god. Let's read some of these comments. Totally agree have a small amethyst cathedral that is faded to a pale violet. I adore it for that reason. Its energy is soft and gentle. I agree with your post. Still, I'm careful to avoid excessive light exposure to my crystals since the color they are, I feel, helps their energy. Color equals energy, after all. God, so many misinformed... It's, just, it's kind of just a shame, more than anything. I can understand being in like a bad place and wanting some external thing to help you that feels out of your control but you just put faith in it and you think it gives you power or helps you in some way. But God, man, some people just take advantage of it and then write articles like this and I'm sure these aren't free and I'm sure she's selling them. So let's take a look at her. About, let's see, Sparkle Team. I wonder if that's their real name. I adore teaching and working with crystals. I've learned to channel my inner geek, then merge it with my serious obsession with crystals and stones. Uh, the Academy. National Board Certified. That's insane. She has a YouTube channel all about crystals. Okay. Crystal healing and therapy should be used with the understanding that it is part of a holistic treatment plan. It's not meant to take place of standard medical or psychological treatment because it doesn't work, but to accompany and work alongside it. See, normally when I read these kinds of articles, it, it's just it's like a passive thing where I'm like, oh, that's funny. It's it's kind of BS, but it's funny, you know. And but this stuff, people spend their money on it. People invent. People think might like lose some hope maybe they have some kind of disease and they've run out of options and they put their last bit of hope into like healing crystals and then they still die 
or something along those lines. Like, you're not helping people doing this. You're a scam artist. And if you don't know that, then you're a delusional scam artist. Sorry, I'm getting, now I'm starting to actually get a little bit triggered that someone dedicates their life to selling healing crystals when that's not a thing. Oh, home. Let's look at this now. Courses. Cool. So they're really milking this, aren't they? How to make crystal infused healing water. That sounds like you're paying for expensive pee. That's all that is. Oh man. Thank you to you, to those of you who like pointed this out. Because the more people that understand that this shit is bullshit, the better. Or at least, uh, I'm not, again, I, this kind of thing is not for me to really try to convince you that this stuff is just wrong and the logic is, is, is just very fallible and it just doesn't get you anywhere. It's not based in real science. I'm not trying all that hard to do that, but at least this is getting you to maybe look deeper into it. Maybe think before you buy this moon crystal uh, amethyst thing maybe maybe put some thought into it do you really think this is going to work why do you think it's going to work is is the more important question and when people throw around buzzwords like quarks and color charge and stuff like that i understand that it can be super confusing and intimidating because at first they throw those words and you're less inclined to be like to question it right because clearly they must know something that you don't if they use big words like that but no, people can be, people can use big words and still be full of shit. But anyways, I'm going to call the video there. Uh, I don't really have too much more to speak about this kind of article. Keep these coming. I like going over those. I like going over these kinds of articles as a whole and sort of bringing them to light in, in, a, in a kind of funny way. I know this one was less funny because it kind of got to me a little bit that people are making money off of what seems like... Um, maybe people having misfortunes happen to them, whether that be some kind of illness or whatever, and then hoping that this can work for them. And I don't think that's right. But anyways, if you enjoy these videos and you found another article online or something that you'd like me to go over, share it in the comment section and maybe I'll do that next week. So let me know in the comment section if you found any interesting ones and I'll see you guys there.